What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for some more content for you guys. And a happy deadline day to everyone out there, um, especially to those ones doing their business today, which is probably not going to be Tottenham Hotspur, seeing as we look like we are probably done for the day already and people don't have to tune in anymore you can stop stop watching now <laughs> we're done for the day should have just led up to it and end of the stream you say we're done for the day <laughs> keeping you keeping you on a rope that's what we're going to be doing uh, for the rest of the day but um what we're going to be doing today on today's stream we're going to um keep you up to date on the latest going on in the transfer window and we're going to be getting you guys on to have your say and i want to know your opinions on how you think spurs have done in this transfer window but let's get into the headlines first and foremost and let's start off with pedro porro once again the daily porro is back potentially for the last time um for this chat for this um for this year and um, let's start off with Record Portugal. And they say Tottenham will sign Pedro Porro on an initial loan deal worth 5 million euros and have the obligation to buy him 42.5 million plus 15% of Marcus Edwards' future transfer fee. Um, quite interesting. I didn't know it was a loan deal when we were talking about it yesterday, but that's come to light today. And Mike McGrath says Pedro Porro pressured Sporting into accepting a deal with Tottenham as the wingback had his heart set on the move to the club. And he was pictured by the media in Portugal flying out to London late last night. And he was interviewed by the press there. And a little clip of the interview says he's grateful to Sporting. He loves the club. Um, and he didn't train because he was just so focused on uh, Spurs and he'll always be grateful to Sporting. And last but not least on Pedro Porro, as it stands, there are no expected first team additions after Pedro Porro. Um, but finally, we got our man and uh, we're going to see the announcement today. Obviously, we'll bring that to you. But uh, what's your thoughts on it being a loan with an obligation to buy? Yeah, a lot of people seem to be quite angry about it. Um, the fact that... Um, Would anyone be angry about the re it? For some of all, people believe that if we're delaying our... Um, our the fee to the summer then Levy can use that as an excuse to not spend money in the summer because with the Kulisevsky money Poro has to come out start coming out in the summer as well and they're worried that this money is going to come out of the summer budget which means we're going to have less money in the summer to spend on players but what they got to realize is if we can do loan to obligations now and 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 uh, delay the funds coming out then we can do loans loans obligations in the summer as well and i don't think it's going to affect the summer budget i can't see, i don't see why it would but an interesting interesting tidbit from um ali gold as to why this was a loan with an option to buy he says on the pedro porro deal I understand it's been done that way to fit in with sporting's financial commitments they need they need it to show in the next financial year so the two clubs found a solution to still be able to sign a player now rather than wait until the summer he said had heard suggestions in the past month that man city would get more from sporting if poro was sold within a certain time frame i wonder if true whether this also works around that to an extent for the portuguese club so bola well i guess maybe you know he's um talking it from a spurs point of view maybe this is the information spurs want to get out there but he's claiming that is to benefit sporting why it's a loan with an option to buy and, and in terms of um what timing the funds are coming out so um i wouldn't necessarily think um it affects tottenham's budget in the summer or anything like that um obviously it's not too i don't, don't make don't think it makes too much of a difference we're signing him permanently it's an obligation not an option to buy so it seems as though this one is definitely um going to happen permanently um the loan fee is five million euros um and then uh, 42 million euros apparently um with the full fee so um for me it doesn't make too much of a difference i don't know why people um are, are, are speculating about it affecting the summer budget but i'm just delighted that we've identified a uh, upgrade in that in the position at right wing back and we've gone out and actually got him through the door and although it's taken a while and although we could have got it done quicker i'm delighted that we finally um like it seems like there's a strategic approach to actually getting him through the door and actually um molding the team um to get the best out of itself in, in a way so it's more most functioning and i think a lot of the times we haven't done that but i think getting poro considering we had um 
three right wing backs already at the club. I think in previous years we wouldn't have done this deal in January with the excuse of, well, we have this player, we have that player, and um, we, we're going to have to make them leave before signing anyone. But I'm happy in that we've gone for our top target, we've got him through the door, and hopefully he'll be um, a massive uh, game changer in that position um, in the second half of the season. Yeah, to be fair, it's. Um it's the same that's followed on from the summer, to be honest, because we brought in midfielders in the summer and we still had La Celso and Ndombele on the books and we got the, got rid of them later on in the window. So I do think that it has started to turn maybe from the summer window, but it's definitely positive news that Porro has come in before we got rid of any other right backs. Uh, definitely agree with that. On the situation about the loan with an obligation to buy, I mean, some of our best signings in, in the recent years have been loaned with obligation to buy. When you look at Kulusevski, you look at Romero, um, and now you're looking at Pedro Porro. So I have no problem with it whatsoever. Um, and the way we're doing our business at the moment, it looks like probably if we're going in the market in the summer, which obviously we will be, you'll just see more loans with obligations to buy. And I don't have a problem with it. As long as they have obligations in them, then uh, they're going to be our players. And when you're talking about eating into the budget, um, you're either into, it, it, eating into January's budget or the summer budget. Who knows? They, they might be just the same budget anyway. So nobody knows the actual dealings with the finances and how um, Spurs are kind of working through that. So I think what it is, is that people, including us sometimes, just like to have a stick to beat Daniel Levy with. And... Uh, whether that's right or not, we all know the failings that he's um, he's had over the past years. And um, and look, this January transfer window, we've we brought in a great signing in Pedro Porro, a decent backup option in Dan Juma. But in my opinion, it's still not enough. So if you're going to beat Daniel Levy with a stick, don't beat him with uh, signing Pedro with an obligation to buy. Beat him with not signing any centre backs this uh, January. That's um, and that's my opinion. So you got to pick your arguments and. Uh, Signing Pedro Porro, which could arguably be one of our best signings in the last few few years, um, where he had to come in and save the deal. So you got to give credit where credit's due. But where, where you don't give him credit and where you definitely have to beat him with is not bringing in a centre-back this window because I think that's the um, the main sticking point. But in terms of Pedro Porro, brilliant signing, brilliant deal and uh, very much looking forward to seeing him play. Let's move on to other right wing-backs now and Matt Doherty. This came as a bit of a surprise to us today. Matty Moretto broke it, said Tottenham will loan Matt Doherty to Atletico Madrid. Dan Kilpatrick says Athlet uh, Matt Doherty is in Madrid to complete a straight loan to Atletico until the end of the season no option or obligation and last but not least Romano said Atletico are set to sign Matt Doherty on loan from Tottenham here we go agreement in place no buy option clause included medical booked for Doherty who's set to leave as Porro will join Tottenham so the mm. second half of the season Atletico Madrid are going to have Regulon on the left Doherty on the right um, basically back to Jose Ball unbelievable <laughs> um, I'm really surprised by this move and that um, Doherty that our first row of Atletico have really come in for him I'm um, not that surprised with Doherty I'm sure he's probably been told look second half of the season you're surplus to requirements with Porro going out the door um, coming in the door sorry so um, it's either leave or you're going to get very limited game time and it's only a six month straight loan deal so no obligations or options to Dubai, so he's going to be back here in the summer anyway. Um, so it makes sense from his point of view to put him to um, as well work under Simeone for six months. I think I think there are pros and cons to uh, in terms of where we are on the squad to this deal. I think the uh, pros are that if with with Poro coming in, if we needed, I think if we needed to keep one attacking wing back and one defensive wing back, it makes sense to let Doherty go, keep Emerson as well. Emerson can play in some of the big games if we need a more defensive minded wing back. Um, and we have obviously Poro now coming in when we're looking to be a lot more offensive. And so we have a bit of options. If we were to keep, if we were to get rid of Emerson and keep Doherty, then um, you could argue that we don't have that kind of defensive option if, if need be. Um, and Poro can fill, fill that kind of role now from, from an offensive standpoint, and Doherty wasn't really doing it anyway. Um, on the drawbacks, I would say Doherty can play both wings. He can play left and right if need be. Um, he is probably a better wing-back right now than Emerson, although Emerson um, is the has, has been improving of late, but um, I do think that a Doherty for us has been a bit more effective, especially going forward. Um and obviously he's he's good mates of Harry Kane so that obviously that'll be a disappointment for him but um, that's by the by I think 
by and large, it's a deal that makes sense for everyone. I'm not too upset about it. Um, obviously, uh, we're letting go in Spence as well, so that's two wing backs out the door. I'm I'm not too bothered about it because I don't think long term Doherty was ever going to be a wing back for us or um, or for Conte. Um, I do think he did well filling in. I did think he was a good stopgap for a bit. He did very well for a, for a bit of patch of form last season. And then this season, there were signs of him getting back to his best without him really threatening to do so. Um, so I do think that um, it's a great move for him. And maybe, you know, you saw what good it did Trippier going over to Atletico Madrid and getting game time there and playing under Simeone, becoming a better wing back. So maybe you could argue... Doherty could um, benefit in the same way. I do think it's going to be a different case, and I don't think he's going to be as much as a su success that Trippier was. But um, I'm sure he'll benefit as a player overall anyway. Yeah, I think, look, it's good for him. It's good for us. Um, I don't think Doherty ever reached the heights that we ever thought he would uh, from that signing from Wolves. I just remember both of us being so excited when we signed him, one of the uh, leading wing-backs in the Premier League at the time. And it just hasn't worked out for him for one reason or another. Injuries stifled him massively last year. 31, going to be 32 by the end of the season. Um, and when he comes back here, he'll be entering in his last year of his contract. So... We've probably seen the last of Matt Doherty at Spurs, in my opinion. And um, yeah, just thank, thanks for the service and uh, wish you all the luck at Atletico. I don't think he's going to, you know, really push on his career now um, like, like Trippier did. I do think that maybe Regulon can. Now he's starting to get into the team and get minutes now. I think Regulon can definitely come on under Simeone being um, he's got scope to improve. He's, he's, got, he's at a good age. But with Doherty, I think that Look, he'll just go there for six months. I don't even know if he'll get too much game time as well. Maybe he's just going to be a backup or something. Yeah, because they got Molina there, who was um, starting right back for Argentina at the World Cup, and he was he was playing really well. I don't know how well he's playing for Atletico, but I can't see Doherty ousting him from the team as well. Another thing to consider: they were playing a back three at the beginning of the season, but since um, about October time, they've been playing a back four very consistently. Simi um, Atletico, and they do play a back four in general um, under Simeone. So whether Doherty can be very effective. In in that system in a back four we saw under Mourinho he just wasn't really able to do it uh, to a good standard and he only really his performance has only really started to improve once he went back to his more familiar wing back role so whether he can do that for Atletico remains to be seen I don't think he has the technical ability that someone like Trippier did which we knew when Trippier um, left to uh, Atletico that all he needed improving was his um, uh, defending and he would be a top top wing back and boy he uh, did and, that. and he did that really well and he always had an amazing ability on the ball crossing wise um, and his delivery in the final third was always top notch. Doherty's never really shown that for Tottenham um, so I, I don't see him having a, uh, the same kind of impact as Trippier did in my mm. opinion. Yeah, I actually think it's a pretty poor signing from Atletico but I could be wrong. I, no, he could I agree. Do well. no, I completely agree with you. I think that maybe um, maybe La Liga might suit him a little bit more than the Premier League right now due to his age and stuff but I still don't think it's going to be a great signing for Atletico. Um, but let's talk about our other right wing backs. First of all, Emerson Royale. Dan Kilpatrick says Emerson made it clear that he did not want to leave the Premier League or London this month. Um, but we don't have any information if anyone came in for him or anything. I, I, I would have thought that Emerson would have been a better signing for Atletico than, mm -hmm. um, than Doherty would have been. 100%, I agree. More used to a back four. I think he's more used to Spanish football. Um, he in, in, in Atletico system, they don't need the wing backs to be that offensive. So uh, that would definitely suit Emerson. He would have been a better signing, but... Um, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happier that we've kept Emerson in a way because I think it gives us more variety mm. at wing back. Um, I'd rather choose between Poro and Emerson than Poro and Doherty. Yeah, um, completely agree. So um, I'm pretty happy with that, even though uh, Doherty's the better offensive wing back than Emerson. I think Emerson provides an option just in case um, uh, we need a more defensive option. So I'm happy with. Uh, I'm happy that he's staying at the end of the day. Also, he's younger, 23. He's probably got a higher market value. Um, and who knows, maybe with the competition of Poro can um, drive him on a bit. Maybe Poro can teach him to cross. That will be nice. Um, but this is what we'll we were see. saying in the summer, right, when we brought in Spence. Oh, it's so great. We're going to have an attacking wing back now. We're going to have a defensive wing back and hopefully ship Doherty out. Obviously, what's happened with Spence has happened with Spence. Um, but I think now we're, we're going to see that now with Porro and Emerson here. And I think it's two good options. I know everyone likes the clown on Emerson. And um, sometimes going forward, he definitely leaves us wanting. But I think, More than sometimes. Yeah, more than sometimes. <laughs> less, yeah, it's very true. But you look at 
in the big games, even this year when we lost 4 2 to Man City, he had a really good game last year at Anfield, last year at the Etihad. In big games, he turns up for us, Emerson, in the games where backs against the wall and we're really asked to defend. I think Emerson really provides for us in those games. So um, I think in the summer, we should revisit the Emerson situation, potentially look to ship him out and bring someone else in. But for now, I'm happy with Emerson and Porro being our right wing backs from now until the end of the season. Yeah, me too. And I think that there's good balance there. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited for uh, to see Porro in a Spurs shirt and see what he can do at right wing back. But I think it's the right right call to, to uh, for a choice to ship Doherty out, in my opinion. Mm. Let's talk about Jed Spence now, the last of the right wing backs for today. And Romano says that Jed Spence has completed medical tests ahead of his loan move to Wren with contracts now set to be signed. Loan deal won't include any option to buy. Spence is convinced of his long-term future at Tottenham. And Ali Gold said that Atletico Madrid wanted to sign Jed Spence on loan, but the player turned down the move as he wanted regular football at Wren. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Um, kind of make kind of makes sense um, that if now that Atletico have gone for Doherty, that they were looking at Spence. They just and, come shopping at us for all their right backs. Yeah, it looks like yeah, <laughs> apparently it might be an agent kind of thing. But um, I think that Spence is uh, making the right call for his future. I don't like. It, apparently, it's kind of it was his decision to go to Ren, and I think it's quite a mature decision to go to a club maybe less fancied or less of a name, where you, you he might see Atletico coming in and get all excited and and you know rush into a decision. But he's taken his time, he's assessed all the options, and he's seen a club like Ren challenging for uh, Champions League spots out in France, uh, a, a team that's known for developing young players. He knows he's going to get game time at a good level and to help his development. And I think it's quite a mature decision to go over to Ren um, to really help himself and um, uh, I think it's going to be a good move for him I think he's he going to be in a system which suits him plays a back three um, he's going to be playing week in week out uh, so I, I, at top level as well we've got to remember as much as um, Spence it, came with a high potential he's still not apart from the FA Cup games he's still not played regularly at our top level so playing at that level for Wren whatever kind of standard you think it is I think it's going to really help his development so I'm very excited about this deal you could argue you know beginning of the season we had Spence Emerson Doherty and Doherty could cover both wing backs and now with Spence and Doherty out the door are we short um, I would say no we still got two on each side which should be okay but you never know if, if, if we, we could get unlucky with injuries and all of a sudden mm. selling Doherty and you're, um, sending Doherty out on loan you're thinking we are a bit sure you could have covered both wings but I think we should be all right um, for that position so uh, hopefully Spence can learn from this and convince Conte next season that he's uh, ready to step up for Premier League for after six months in France yeah I think um, in the summer when we signed Jed Spence Jed probably came here with the expectation to play a lot more than he has played in my opinion with what he's shown in the championship and in the cup games for Nottingham Forest last season and getting promotion obviously um, and I think that when these moves came about in the summer, he's done the right thing and thought about development first over anything else because he's probably had a chat with Conte and, and the coaching staff and they have told him how he needs to develop and what he needs to do to get into this Spurs side. And um, it would have been very easy of him just to go, oh, Atletico are in for me, uh, the, the shining lights of a massive club and go, you know, I'm going to go there, look at the club, look what club want me. But he's done it really clever. He's thought about his development first and he's going to go to the place that is best for his development and where he's going to play the most. So I'm very happy with that about Jed Spence. Um, and it shows maybe he's um, he's got good people around him and he's got a good head on his shoulders. So I'm very happy about that in regards to Jed Spence. But I really hope he has a successful loan out in Wren and we'll be keeping a very keen eye on him. And... Um, they're in the Europa League, so maybe he mm. can uh, knock out Arsenal again. Oh, that would be nice. Imagine <laughs> he goes, comes up against Arsenal. That would be beautiful. Yeah. Um, let's talk about potential centre-back incomings now for the remainder of the transfer window today. Al uh, Alex Crook says Tottenham are considering a move for a centre-back on deadline day. But Ali Gold has pushed back on it. He says Tottenham want to sign two centre-backs in the summer. One on the left and one in the right or the centre while they'll keep an eye out for any late opportunities to push one of those moves forward that is deemed more uh, unlikely at this point. And Tom Barkley says Pedro Porro is almost certainly going to be Tottenham's last senior signing of the day. Yeah, we're, we're, there's absolutely no chance for signing a centre-back at this late hour for the simple reason as how we do business. We do business to look for um, uh, under undervalued um, 
options in the window or um, options that um, we can get for a, for a, for a cheapish price. Uh, we want to we, we want to go for options in the January window, which we believe um, we can get for under the value of the true the true nature of the player, like we did with Bentenko and Kulusevski last season. But for if, it, we, if to sign a centre back to really improve us right now, we need to sign a centre back who probably is um, one of the main centre backs for their current team. And to do that. Um, when you wait to the uh, to late in the window, you can't get these players out their clubs for under them their market value. In fact, when you come uh, when you come on the deadline day of a window to a club who um, who have a pl star player in their team, you have to play over the odds to get them in this day and age. When you go late in the window, because the, these clubs are thinking, I need time to replace the player. Um, he's a player that he's very crucial to our team as well. Especially when you look at someone like Incapia, he's very young. Um, his value is only going to grow. So why would they let him go on deadline day for a cheap for a cheap fee um, unless they're desperate to sell? Um, so you have to. Uh, so the only players you're going to be able to get are players that the the selling club don't really want and are willing to let go of and are willing to take any sort of fee uh, at the end of the window. And those sort of players aren't going to really improve us. So I don't see any logic on looking for centre-backs on deadline day and expecting um, them to improve us because it just ain't going to happen in my opinion. Um, that's why I said I would test the water for Maguire because he's the kind of option. He's homegrown. Um, he's a centre back that would improve us, in my opinion. And um, if you could, if they would be willing to let him go on loan, that that would be a savvy deal for six months. I just don't see Tottenham signing any centre backs um, of value uh, at this late stage um, because we're not going to pay over. The, we're going to have to pay over the odds to get one now, and we're not going to. We never do that. We're not going to do that. So I don't see um, any potential. Well, we've had uh, an update from uh, Danny Kirimano. Uh, so uh, he says that um, Spurs are looking to do a deal with Max Kilman with potentially Tanganga going the other way as Lopetegui really likes Tanganga. I mean, <laughs> what a great deal that would be. I mean, I would love that, but um, uh, I, I heard, wasn't that, I think that was the Spurs I, uh, and the Wolf, I think his name was, yeah. said that Spurs did um, make an approach for Kilman, but it was rejected. So... Um, that would make sense um, to that kind of information. I, I don't look again. If you go in for Kilman at this late stage, you're going to have to pay over the odds, not under the odds, uh, to get him in. He starts week in, week out for Wolves. He's a promising, um, well, I say promising, he's 25 years of age now, but he's definitely a very good um, left centre back um, that, that would come into our side and, and improve that side. But Wolves aren't going to let him go very easily at this late stage. Um, and again, if we were to go in earlier in the window, and, and there could have been a deal to be done, but at this late stage, they're going to turn around and say, look, either you, either you play a premium because it's very late in the window or you're not getting him, and that, mm. we never pay premium, so yeah. I don't see it. Uh, I mean, do you think we could get a deal done for him for something like 30 million plus Tanganga, 30 million plus Sanchez, 30 million plus someone? I, don't, I mean, depends how highly they rate Sanchez or Tanganga, but... Um, are we willing to go that oh, that high? Probably. I, I would like to think we, we should be willing to go that high. But um, I mean, no, honest, I don't. I don't. A little honest. extra no money in this this window. I don't think that would get him in, to be honest. Really? Unless they, unless they rate Tangag and Sanchez that highly. But I think Hillman, I think they probably want more money. How much do you reckon he's, he's worth to them? Well, he's, tw he's one of their main centre-backs. I think he came through their academy. Um, probably at 40 million, I would say. Yeah. So thirty million plus a Tanganga would probably do the job. Not you, they get a, they get a centre back in replaced who's worth probably about ten fifteen million, and we'll give them thirty million as well on top of that. And I say it depends how highly they rate Tanganga and because they need someone who's going to slot in straight away. And mm -hmm. if they don't believe that Sanchez or Tanganga will do that in that role, then it's not going to be worth it for them. Yeah, true. Uh, but let's talk about Tanganga now. As Alex Crook says uh, there is a bit of interest in Tanganga from Inter Milan on loan today. I mean, that would be a brilliant move from him for him. Uh, but I just can't see that happening at all. I mean, they've got it's such good centre backs at that club. Why would they need Tanganga? Yeah, um, unless they're looking for one who's got potential to um, come in and you know grow with the team, <laughs> not replace Grignard, but like uh, be a potential centre back, like a youngish centre back, kind of what he plays the role he plays for Tottenham, but with more game time, um, like a backup right now, but with potential in the future to uh, integrate into the first team. Look, he got, apparently he was very close, wasn't he, last summer to AC Milan, um, which didn't quite, uh, they didn't quite pull off the deal. 
Um, but if they need a backup centre back, a loan deal isn't that unlikely, I don't think. But I don't see it happening before the end of the window, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. Um, let's talk about Oli Skip now. Ali Gold says Palace, Fulham, Leeds, and Bournemouth are all keen to take Oli Skip on loan. However, Conte is believed to have rejected any prospect of a loan move as he rates Skip very highly. Um, and he also says a loan move away for Oli Skip is considered unlikely at this stage as Pape Matasar deals with an injury. Yeah, and I'm happy to hear that. Um, obviously, um, we were saying at the beginning of the window we're quite open to Oli Skip going on loan um, this January to get some game time because it's going to be difficult for him to get that game time um, uh, over the next six months for the midfielders in form right now. And also the fact that he wasn't playing too well. Um, but he did have a very positive cameo against Preston. I've never doubted Skip's ability and quality, and it's great to hear that Conte uh, rejected a loan bid because he believes in his quality, and maybe we'll see more of him in the second half of the season. You've got to remember, he had a very long injury, and um, that injury clearly took a lot of getting over. Um, you've got to remember last season, he was always, every up there was like, oh, he's a week away, he's a week away, and then it, and then it kept getting delayed, delayed, delayed up until the fact that he got, he got surgery. So that must have been very, very frustrating for him um, to, go, to go through that last season. And now he's come back this season, hasn't quite been the same just yet, but I just think he needs time and patience to get to build himself back to, that, to the level he was showing. And I'm glad that Conte is saying he really believes in him and he's not willing to let him go on loan because it just means he he's seeing the quality that we're all seeing, um, hopefully. So I'm happy with that news and I'm happy for him to stay on. Yeah, and anyway, Jose called him a future captain at Spurs, so we all know that's going to happen because uh, Jose is always spot on in these kind of predictions. But last but not least, we do have a confirmed signing officially by the club is Jude Sunsop Bell from Chelsea. Romano says, official, completed, talented striker Jude Sunsop Bell, Joy Tottenham on a permanent move from Chelsea. And the official statement is, we are pleased to confirm the addition of Jude Sunsop Bell to our development squad. Welcome to Spurs, Jude. The 19-year-old forward has signed from Chelsea and agreed a deal that will run till June 2025. Statement has confirmed. And his uh, he done a post on Instagram and says, extremely excited to have signed su for such a great club. Can't wait to get started on this new journey. Looking forward to many years of success. Yeah, let's hope um, he becomes a good player for the future. Going to have to watch and see how he develops. I don't see him breaking to the first team anytime soon. Um, but... We'll have to see they're going to loan him out next season. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that, how how he how he does on the loan. Yeah. All right. So that um, yeah, just quickly, um, Bruno Andrade saying now that Porro's currently doing his medical tests and he will sign the contract imminently. All right, it's Porro Day, people. Get excited. Let's hope we can uh, do something miraculous and bring in another signing as well before the deadline day in just under ten hours. Yeah!